Hello okay. everyone, I am Jesse, or Game Over Jesse. Here with us is Daniel and Chablima. Today we're going to be doing uh, a look back at some retro reviews from IGN and GameSpot about The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. For the past few weeks we've been going back and looking at reviews from the different Zelda games to kind of get in the mind of the people who were actually playing the games at the time that they released. And specifically we were looking at the bad reviews to see legitimately what kind of criticisms people had or if it was just them being stupid and saying the game sucked because it didn't run at 4k and 60 fps as Daniel explained <laughs> earlier although some Zelda games do run at 60 frames uh, I think the link between worlds <laughs> from 993 no not not this <laughs> one but yeah so anyways <laughs> these are legitimate reviews and hopefully this will help give you guys an idea of what to expect from the remake because I know a lot of people would like to play the original but they don't really want to put time into an 8-bit game from like design for the the Game Boy where you'd have to like pause the game every time you want to go to a different item or a weapon because I think both your sword and shield count mm -hmm. as an item slot and you only have two item slots yep so but a good thing in the remake you your sword and shield are automatic because there is a spot where like Link was jumping so he was using the, the rock the, feather the, yeah the rock feather yeah and he had his sword and shield out while he did that so already there's a lot of improvements to the game because if you have your sword and shield automatically and then you get other buttons for your other items that instantly improves the game but yeah anyways, i mean switch has enough buttons so. yeah yeah even on the the 3ds they added like the touchscreen buttons like you could have mm. one and, the, and two i think yeah as the and buttons. your instrument was like always to your button in the remakes yeah so they yeah. they gave you buttons that weren't even on the 3ds yes <laughs> but anyways this review comes from adam cleveland of ign uh, says one of the first game boy color titles was a revamp of the existing rpg what has changed so this is a review for Link's awakening dx written in 1999 Ooh. so presumably around the time that it released I don't remember the exact year, but uh, this would have been uh, this article would have been written between Ocarina of Time releasing and Majora's Mask releasing. So right between those, he says, "Legend of Zelda: No other name in video game history can grab and shake your attention with such vigor." At first, I thought that said vulgar, and I was thinking, "What's vulgar about Zelda?" Uh, anyways, ever since Link's first adventure in the mid-80s, the series has gained immense popularity, and rightfully so, because the ingenious mind of one Shigeru Miyamoto, we've been able to journey through the land of Hyrule and beyond on several monumental occasions, and the experience found within each one has left a high watermark for other creators to look up to. Since its first arrival on the original Game Boy years ago, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening proved that Nintendo's handheld system can have same walloping punch, the same walloping punch, as its own 16-bit funhouse. And with entertainment and tastes, wait, sorry, ah, I got confused. And with entertainment and extreme doses, it's not amazing to it's not amazing to see why either. Is that a t typo on their part? It's not amazing to see why? That doesn't make sense, yeah, does it? Yeah, that makes no sense. That's not a sentence. The, the, it's, just, it's not a like surprise. It it's, it's no surprise. That's not right? amazing to see why. That's like... The um, sentence would need to be, it's, it's no surprise to see why, right? Yeah. 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 This, does, this, is, this is janky. Yeah, maybe they, they, they spell checking like, IGN. Come on, IGN. I thought you helped help 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 well, At least this one presumably wasn't a stolen review. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It makes it worse because I was on some podcasts with that guy, but apparently he's doing better now. So. I hope yeah. he's learned from that though. So. 
I mean, yeah. that's the biggest thing. I'm sure he can grow as a creator, you know. Yeah. But that's but continuing. Like months ago. <laughs> so. IGN uh, says, no matter where your tastes lie in gaming, you can't go wrong with one of the most ultimate titles in a new DX edition, with plenty of extras for those of us with a Game Boy Color. The hours of fun just keeps going. So features. Fully colorized version of the 1993 classic three battery backed save slots. <laughs> Is that? I, I guess that would be a feature. Yeah, three uh, save slots. <laughs> includes new GBC only dungeon. That would be the color dungeon. And depending on when you beat it, you can choose between two things. Uh, like one makes you stronger and one makes you have a higher defense. I hope you'll be able to somehow get both of them in the Switch version. Like, maybe they'll add in a second new dungeon, Ooh. and then you can get one of the things from each of them. Uh, Game Boy Printer support for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So although this was a DX version, you could still play it on the normal Game Boy, I presume. Uh, although mm. there is but one mode Good. in Link's Awakening, DX. There's certainly not a shortage of places to go, people to meet, or things to do. Oh no, there's a much different tune-in to be sung the second after you wrap your thumbs around the buttons of your Game Boy with this sucker in the slot. The moment you enter the solitary island of Koholent. How do you guys pronounce it? Koholent? Koholent? Koholent. Koholent. Like lint. Like, yeah. oh, lint. we did some laundry, I got lint. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you'll, Koholent. You'll come to grips with just how humongous this portable adventure really is. I think it's the smallest map, actually. But it, I it's, think up it's, to that point, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, big for a Game Boy game. Big, big for Game Boy, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they also fit all of the dungeons on there, too, and that Anyways, and with dozens yeah. of characters and places to interact with, Zelda DX has a lot to boast. A long, short... Ah, oh, this, this is longer than I thought. Calling it Zelda it, DX? It was handy. very long. Yeah. I can't believe you even started reading the entire thing. Well, like... <laughs> so the original plan was to, like, get three or four of these and just read, like, the bottom thing, but I only found two that were actually good. So... Oh. Uh, but wow. the last two... Um, as for the other extras in the fourth Legend of Zelda, there are several. The most noticeable of the bunch would have to be the Game Boy printer compatibility, which is certainly an interesting addition. During many parts of the adventure, which aren't always easy to discover, your picture will be taken and stored in the Koholent Photoshop, where you can drop by whenever you wish to view your picture collection. This would have been a cool feature for Miiverse if they still had that. And if you've gotten the compatible printer, you can make stickers from whatever photographs have been taken. The true challenge of this, however, is to find all the places where you get your pictures taken. If you can find every single last one of them without aid from a player's guide, you'll be a true Zelda master indeed. So you basically turn into Luke. Uh, the verdict. If that's not enough to set your mind on gaming fire, then you seriously need a reality check, because The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening has never been anything but one of the top video games of all time, and its latest enhanced version is nothing short of perfect. Before years to come, and then some, it will continue to remain one of my all-time favorite adventures, and unless someone puts a couple of gun barrels to my head, my opinion won't be sweet. Whoa, got a little dark wow. there. <laughs> That's a little that was pretty wild. <laughs> if you don't already own Zelda DX, there's no reason for this point on that you shouldn't. So hop in your car and step on the gas, because the best Game Boy game of all time has been for sale. I guess they mean been on sale. Been for it. Uh, either works. I don't know. For quite some time, and you're missing out on the oceans of fun. So they end it with a pun. Interesting. Um. It seems like the picture thing they added to this was a like a precursor to the the pictures that you have to take in Wind Waker. And then you can even take the pictures in Breath of the Wild. True. Yeah. True. So Daniel, would you like to uh, go to the GameSpot article and just read off the top one and then the the bottom two paragraphs? Oh sure. That way you can just get a, a summary. Yeah. Get a, just a, just the gist of it. Okay. Because the middle's just going to be talking about the new features, which we already covered. So. Yeah. So okay. Well, GameSpot's article reads. Ah. Uh, 
Um, we can't urge you enough to play this game. This is from by Cameron Diaz. He wrote this on January 28th, 2000, which is actually a little late. A little late. Yeah. But still, uh, as any good Nintendo player well knows, oh, again with the sentences, guys, you need to proofread. As any good Nintendo player well knows, Shigeru Miyamoto's The Legend of Zelda series has been going strong for more than 15 years. Over a wide variety of platforms, Young Hero Link's magical adventures began on the humble NES before spawning sequels and spin-offs on the Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and ARG Philips CDI. Why'd you gotta bring that up? In 1994, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening graced the blurry monochromatic screens of the Game Boy around the... Oh, man, it was 19... It was 1993, man. There's okay, there's a couple... Hang on a second. He said 15 years. The first Zelda came out in 1986. Am I wrong about that? If this, he says over 15 years, but if the first Zelda came out in 1986 and this was written in the year 2000, that's only 14 years. So huh? if, if he's this, a time traveler. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that makes sense. Um, and also Link's Awakening came out in 1983, didn't it? didn't it? And he says 1994. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not He's the from journalist. an alternate reality where it was delayed. Uh, Zelda 1 came out sooner and Link's Awakening came out later. Anyways, yeah. I'm not I'm not the journalist, I guess. Uh, the Zelda the Legend of Zelda Link Awakening graced the blurry monochromatic screens of Game Boys across the globe. Many claim that it was indeed better than the 16-bit SNES game. I don't agree with that, actually. But that it chronologically followed although navigating mazes where all the rooms looked similar and staring at that infernal screen for hours on end turned many would-be fans off nintendo has wisely used the launch of the next generation well sort of game boy color to give old game to give the old game a fresh look and a fresh audience um and then he talks about you know a recap of the game and let's just skip down. Speaking of items, plan, plan on spending a good amount of their playtime in the item selection menu. Pressing start opens it up, and the menu lets you assign two usable items to the A and B buttons, while N64 players who have been spoiled, spoiled, it should be, by the multiple assignments they can have with the larger joy pads will squirm at the thought of changing items frequently. However, it's a system that works well within the host machine's constraints. Uh, blah 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 blah. Speaking of colors, the ones in Zelda DX can't fail to impress. Each area has its own mood setting color scheme that makes the makes remembering your location far easier than its monochrome press predecessor allowed. Characters sport their own individually hued colors and buildings and objects have been carefully painted. The overall effects makes the game highly reminiscent of the SNES installment of the series, which of course is no bad thing. Oh, and before we forget, owners of the Game Boy printer get a photo scrapbook of Link's adventure that you can copy it's pretty cool when an accessory that costs as much as the machine you bought it for is actually supported the beauty of zelda is that it makes the scary world of console rpgs easily accessible for anyone blending action adventure and good old-fashioned gameplay into one seamless package it's definitely one of the best game boy games ever and it looks better than ever we can't urge you enough to play this game he doesn't actually give it a score though but that's a nice review. There's so, a few little issues, but... <laughs> two things. When you you mentioned, or he mentioned, that some people would get tired of it or something like that. Right. Was he, was he talking about A Link to the Past? Like, people getting tired of that or getting tired of this? Because mm. it went from talking about A Link to the Past and then to saying that people... Uh, hang on. Oh, no, no, talking about... I think he's talking about the original version okay. of the game. Because this is a review of the DX version, right? So he says, Navigating mazes where all the rooms look similar and staring at that infernal screen for hours on end turned many would-be fans off. Nintendo wisely used the launch of the next-generation Game Boy Color to give the old game a fresh look. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. 
Um, mm. The only other thing, he says giving console RPGs easily accessible. I remember... Zelda, it's not an RPG. Yeah, I, <laughs> it has RPG <laughs> elements, but it's not it's, an RPG. But I remember a... there was uh, one of my old friends from like the 6th or 7th grade. I had traded my deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards for a Game Boy that had... That's um, a good deal. <laughs> I had... Um, Final Fantasy 2, I think, for it. So mm. there were already, like, real RPGs on the Game Boy that were console RPGs because it was, like, an NES game ported right. over. Makes um, sense. So I, I don't understand... I don't know. Thing. Maybe he just means, this... like, in the world of Nintendo. Uh, Maybe. Because like, Nintendo never really had any RPGs until, like... <laughs> Mario and Super Mario RPG, right? Ah, uh, yeah, Super mm. Mario RPG. Yeah, that game I've played. <laughs> I haven't played it actually. Me Maybe I should stream it. Actually, it has a really interesting look because every time I see oh, yeah. it, I think it's a Super Nintendo game. It is Super it is. Mario RPG. It is a Super. Yeah, Nintendo sorry. Game. <laughs> it, I was. It, 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 no, no, I, I meant, like, because it looks better than, I don't know, like, my my head wasn't clicking. It has, like, one of those FX chips in it to make it, like, look better than a normal mm. Super Nintendo game. Mm. Yes. So. Also, if your head's uh, clicking, you should get checked out. What? My head's clicking? Yeah, you said my head wasn't clicking. Oh, if your head is yeah. clicking, you should get that checked out. I got a few uh, loose wires. Oh, no. Uh, in the chat, Abigail says, wow, he must have really wanted those Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, the person you traded to. So I really I, hope that is, person is like... I can't imagine being, like, like wanting Yu-Gi-Oh cards so bad that I'd trade my Game Boy. I had some good cards. <laughs> they must have been. <laughs> they must have. Maybe he's snickering about it. And he's like, I can't believe that guy traded these awesome cards for that stupid Game Boy. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, I don't know if I, the totally unrelated, but I don't know if I told you guys about this. Uh, growing up, there was this guy that I was in high school with, and he always played Pokemon on his DS. And then one day his DS nice. broke, and he was really upset about it. And me, being the kind of person. That has two of the original DS. I had a DSi and 3DS, and I have the new 2DS XL. Um, I gave him my DSi because I was like, I already have a ton of these, and Pokemon is like basically your life, and it's all that gets you through the day, so please take this. It was a gift to me, please take this. <laughs> That's really cool. Didn't, wow. Didn't trade it for anything, but I was figured Good. I would never use it that ever so nice in my life. You. Good girl yeah. tubes. Make it a meme, uh, people. Present from an ex-boyfriend. Gave it away to someone else. Hmm. Nice. Recycling. Yeah. Alright. Um, yeah, so Daniel and I, we've, we've already talked about Link's Awakening quite a bit on some of the, the last couple of podcasts because it was just us two. But I don't think you've been able to give like your full thoughts on Link's Awakening, Heavy Tubes. Mm, I think we, like, I was part of a podcast after the announcement for it. Yeah. But that was a while ago. So what are, I, like, to, to quickly update, what are, what are your thoughts? Like, after these reviews and everything and what you've seen, like, are you excited for it? Oh, How yeah, absolutely. Those reviews are great, and I think that they really highlight like a lot of the really amazing things about the game without actually really telling you too much about it, and really amps it up for people to be like, hey, that's cool, maybe this is a game that I should consider playing. Um, I haven't actually played it in a really long time, I think I actually had it on my DS somehow. Um, so I played it through there, and that was a lot of fun, and I'm very excited to just see like the new style of the game like I'm very excited about that that was the big thing was like seeing all the hate about it on Twitter I was very confused and I felt like it was very misplaced and I think that the style suits it 100% I am so excited to relive literally all of those past memories again and have this new game come out for a younger generation to enjoy it the same way that I did now 
do you think in any way that there might be some form of multiplayer added to it? Since like there was that big interview with the president where they said they were going to be like a big push with multiplayer. Like, because every time I look mm-hmm. at Link's Awakening, I understand that the original Game Boy just had like a tiny screen, so you didn't get that much area outside of Link. Mm-hmm. And on the Switch, like you can basically play it on a huge TV or in handheld mode. So there's obviously going to be a lot more space with Link. Um, but even like in the new Pokemon Let's Go games, like it's not online multiplayer, but you can have like two characters running around on the screen, um, and it keeps track of both of them. And when I look at this, I just I keep thinking like there's enough room there to where you could add another Link. And but I want Nintendo is, to do that. But is if you made it multiplayer, it would be very hard to manage because it would be a lot like in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. That second person person they will throw pokeballs and they will do their thing but they essentially don't do anything the only time that having them is actually a benefit to you is if you're in battle because then you get to use two pokemon instead of one which is super op and breaks the game and you'll see a lot of people that are playing the game actually do two player on their own just to help grind through things a lot faster so that being said like the way that they did it with let's go pikachu and let's go eevee i see that really as a like Maybe you want to enjoy video games and you have like a younger child, you pass a Joy-Con to them and they're excited because they get to be part of the action and they get to be part of the game without actually influencing the way that you're enjoying the game. And I think that's probably like a really big part of it because I don't see that um, Link's Awakening would be suited at all for a multiplayer game. Like, there's nothing there. Basically, the other person would follow you around while you go ahead and do your thing. If I played it with literally anyone else other than you two, I would probably beat the entire game with them basically tailing along. Um, the only time that I've actually seen like a Zelda multiplayer like really work out, or even like any Nintendo multiplayer, was when we played Four Swords, and there are so many little puzzles to be played. So much fun. So, much <laughs> so many fun. puzzles to play with friends, and I thought that was a really cool aspect of it, because a lot of those puzzles are designed to be playing with more than one person. And it makes it so much easier than you having to control the other people, right? Mm-hmm. So, in that sense, like I feel like Link's Awakening, like in order for them to make it a multiplayer game, they would have to add a lot more to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only multiplayer bits I can really think of adding into it would be like some weird form of leaderboards, like they have in mm-hmm. Mario Odyssey. But, I mean, the experience that is Link's Awakening is so solely focus on the adventure at hand that and i'm not sure how it would work <laughs> otherwise yeah um, i think like, with like Mario, the best you way to add luigi and boom it's multiplayer and it's fun <laughs> like, yeah so, exactly did, did you see on there's a super mario maker 2 leak where um, just mario maker 2 i don't know what it is right um, yeah yeah but there, there was a, a leak where a magazine had like had a promotional image or whatever and it had Luigi as the character that you're playing as. Oh, neat. But it makes sense oh. because in the logo for their reveal for it, in the first game, you know how it has Mario in his little builder's outfit? When they mm-hmm. revealed it, they showed Mario with Luigi also in his builder outfit. Oh, cool. So it totally makes sense. Yeah. But Maybe that could be leak. multiplayer. Maybe. Like new... Like make two-player levels like in New Super Mario Bros. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah. cool. Uh, I think we can move on to the next one, right? Yes. Yeah. We didn't get sidetracked at all. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.